Hi, my name is Jacqueline Gallo and I'm a PhD student here at Pembroke College in the Faculty of Education here in Cambridge. Um, I'm originally from the United States and I have a previous career in teaching in secondary school and school administration as well as working with a Catholic congregation of sisters um, in Mexico. I decided after over a decade in, in schools that I wanted to go into research and what I brought out of my teaching experience was the knowledge that students aren't always prepared to exit secondary school. So I wanted to focus on um, how is it that students transition out of school. In my master's program, I had an opportunity to work with an anthropologist who focuses his research in East Africa. And so I decided to focus on the um, question of school transition um, for girls in Catholic missionary schools influenced by my own upbringing um, in the East African context. So for the masters as well as for this I've worked in um, agro-pastoralist communities and looking at um, young girls who are the first in their families to be exiting school. I conducted a 15-month ethnographic study in the Karamoja region of Uganda, which is near the South Sudanese border. And um, what was, what's the main question in my study is asking what capabilities do students need to successfully transition out of school. So I look at their education holistically and try to understand also what discourses and value systems affect what it is that they want to become what resources they have to develop the skills needed, and if they're able to accomplish that. Um, I've been following 16 uh, students through their final year of secondary school, living in a boarding school in the region. And these are students that come from an agro-pastoralist background. Um, most have never left the region. These are the only girls in their families that have ever accomplished a secondary education. These girls are also vulnerable to some of the highest gender-based violence rates in the country, there's chronic food insecurity, and um, historically there has been uh, different forms of violence in the region that has quelled um, in the past few years. So what I'm trying to do is really understand what are their aspirations. We do that through interviewing, I do group discussions with girls, as well as journal writing activities for them to explore those important in my research is that it is in itself emancipatory um, and helpful to them. And so a lot of the topics that we discuss are tailored so that they too are, are getting something out of the experience. Um, the, I think the, I'm using Nussbaum's capability approach, which is um, a critique in itself to what is development beyond the statistics, looking at the individual in and of themselves and what does it mean to live a dignified life. And so my goal is that we can understand what they need so that students from different backgrounds are able to do that. So as an ethnographer, um, the type of research that I do is very holistic and it's very all immersive. So I'm living the experience as well as doing the research. Um, one of the things that's very challenging about being an ethnographer is the actual being. Um, trying to understand where do you fit in in community and where you don't, how much do you share, how much you don't. Um, and so for me as a researcher, it's very important to develop um, trusting and honest relationships with people um, as well as make sure that the people who you're working with understand what your limitations are. So for example, in Karamoja, it's a region where there's a lot of international development agencies and also a lot of Christian missionaries. It's very important that I keep my role clear that I'm not there to offer a physical thing to people, whether that be food, whether that be money, um, I'm there to learn about their lives. Um, it's also particularly in, uh, important that people recognize that I'm not a religious sister. I did live in the Catholic boarding school, in the Catholic convent with the religious sisters throughout my stay at the school. Um, but because I do talk about issues that are a little bit sensitive, such as um, women's sexuality um, 
and questions about abuse, it's very important that people also separate me from the church. So um, it's a bit of a balancing act being an ethnographer, but I think a worthwhile one um, to really understand what is going on in people's lives. Historically, um, women, particularly African women, have either been misrepresented or underrepresented in research. And so I believe that ethnography is a way to perform research and give agency to those as knowledge bearers and to have the ability to show their multi-dimensionality as human beings. In terms of the findings, what I'm, what I'm looking at really is how different discourses related to gender, um, related to religious values, how that informs who and what um, these young women aspire to be in their lives. And coming from a, an agro-pastoralist background, what I'm finding is that what the formal education is doing is really in some ways taking them out of what is a traditional lifestyle in the region. And the mere fact that they're not, that they're in a boarding school and they're not at home to go to weddings and to do some of the more traditional things, S the school year is not designed to work with the agricultural seasons. Um, that in a traditional sense of what a woman is supposed to be, they very much lack those skills. We find that uh, generally the girls are um, incentivized to go into what are considered traditionally feminine um, career opportunities such as nursing and teaching. Um, and many of those girls really do want to go into those professions. I think what's problematic is that in some of the funding schemes that allow them to be in school, um, the vast majority of girls are on a scholarship to even be in school that are either given to them by international organizations or the Ugandan government. Um, some of those scholarship schemes predetermine what it is that they're supposed to study. And that's something that is problematic because you have somebody who's been very heavily invested in throughout their years of primary and secondary school. And then they're potentially being pushed into a career path to study in university that they actually don't really want to do. And you know, from a well-being standpoint, and it's really hard to wake up every day and do something that you don't want to do. Um, especially when what your school experience has given you is this, they're telling you that the doors are opening and that there's opportunities for you. And then in some sense, the doors are closing. So um, what I'd like to see, hopefully, is some more autonomy for the girls to be able to have more discussion and work to help them understand what it is that they want to do. The other thing that we're finding is that um, the girls, in many ways, are sheltered from a lot of the um, violence and deprivation that their out-of-school counterparts experience, things such as um, early marriage, uh, forced marriage, gender-based violence, um, and yet by being in the school environment, those things are sheltered. They get three meals a day, um, but they face different um, potential forms of violence by being in school. Um, such as uh, teachers who, who are predators to the students in school. Um, vast majority of teachers are male teachers, um, so that is a problem. And uh, the pressure to take care of their families is very intense. And while on the outside, the girls really show uh, determination and strength and a desire to care for their families, it's an incredibly difficult task to take on that responsibility and meet the expectations that your family has put onto you. So if you're the only person who's been to school and you get a job, let's say, as a teacher, and you have a polygamous family and you have multiple brothers and sisters, your teacher's salary is probably not going to meet the expectations that your family has for you. And so trying to negotiate how they understand those things um, I think it's really important for them 